Okay, would that intro make you buy this toy? That's the big question. Let's hop into the review of Garmadon's Dark Fortress. A little later I'll show you a neat trick with this set and I'll roll some bloopers from the intro video. Also, turn your annotations on because I've got this set up for grabs in a contest. This set is 2505, included is 6 minifigures, 5 weapons, 3 being the sacred weapons of Spinjitsu. And it looks like this Lego comes from a multitude of countries. Opening the box, I can see five bags of fun, a decal sheet, and there's two books for the build. Our house is Lego safe because there's no grass inside. Bag one, at first sight, is a tedious build. Lots of teeny tiny pieces of Lego. Best part is the minifigures lay here awaiting their birth. Bones Eye is the first skeleton to pull himself together. He's nicely detailed on the front, but there's nothing on his back. And I'm not exactly sure why a skeleton needs clothes. There's a grave site with attacking skeleton action. This looks like Chopov. I wonder if he's a Russian skeleton. Anyway, it's a trick that will awaken the dead. Now for the Red Ninja K. He's the Fire Ninja. He's dressed up with some scars in his face and he's got a silver sword. The Girl Ninja Nia looks lovely. She's got a bit of a boy's haircut but also has a cute face hiding behind that ninja mask. This girl's got a stunning wardrobe. Now for the evil Lord Garmadon. He's got some very interesting styling and I can almost see a witch doctor in this character. He carries a thunderbolt, which only he can command, and it's not a fighting weapon. Now for the beast Samukai, and I'm putting him up as the chief bonehead. He's a very interesting minifigure, and he's got lots of nice detail and a chomping jaw action. I'll have to say he's one of the best things in this Lego kit. Bag 1 also contains the big jumping spider, and I'll have to admit I'm not really keen on spiders. This must be the Dark Fortress's main defence, but that's only when the spider's awake. So that's bag 1 done, we've got our minifigures, and our spider. Now let's move on to bag 2, which presents us with the basement of the evil fortress. There's some great decals here, which really set the scene of this gloomy place. Bag 3 presents us with a merry mix of prison bars, bones, and golden chalices and basically dresses the basement of the Dark Fortress. That prison cell is looking mighty cramped and very poorly lit. I'd hate to be trapped in there. There's some really nice details added in this part of the build, and I'm already finding myself playing in the horror environment part built before me. It's time to swap build books as we start on bag 4, yet another easy build which adds an upstairs to the evil empire. I've got to say that chocolate coloured Lego is making me hungry. As we move into the last bag, it's another festival of tiny Lego pieces. I know there's fun here as I can see skull bombs. I wonder if they've got brains as ammunition. We have all that's needed to dress the penthouse of this evil chateau. Ah yes, yet another enjoyable Lego build is done. And now evil has a home. There's a feature built into this set, which allows the big spider on the front to jump off and nab whoever's in its path. Now I'll throw up some close-ups of the features of this set, and I can report to you Although it's a little bit of a tricky set to build, it's an enjoyable build. I did find this set a little bit expensive in the shops, and I waited for it to be at a reduced price. That's the trick with buying Lego if you go to the stores, just wait till it's on special. Sometimes there's 20 or 30% knocked off certain times of the year. From what I've seen, buying this stuff online is the way to go, especially if you come from the country where I live. Now let me show you a few odd things about this set. The angled roof bricks were both shiny and matte, with an inconsistent texture. Hopefully there are Lego tubers out there who can explain why. 
Maybe this is the texture and look that they wanted in these bricks, but none of my other bricks display this type of inconsistency. I also noticed quite a few plastic nipples left on many blister surfaces. Again, I'm sure the LEGO community will speak up on this. There's one theme which became apparent to me when I was building this set, and that's a Halloween theme. With a few parts from my Harry Potter sets, and a few minifigures from my extensive collection, I can transform the dark dungeons into a stunning Halloween playset. I know come Halloween, I'll be featuring this in our house. This typifies the absolute beauty of LEGO. It's such a creative toy, which really never ages. Now in this Halloween theme that I've created here, which minifigure do you feel is totally out of place? Well I hope I've shone some light on this lovely set, and now it's time for the blooper reel. Thank you for your time. Well the main thing you'll learn by seeing the way I failed, is how you can pull this off yourself. And probably the trick to doing these, is being able to edit in a very very fast style. Basically having frame accurate editing, I'm not sure if Windows Movie Maker would pull it off. You really need to be uh, editing down the very fine increments. But as anyone would know who's put cameras uh, next to LEGO minifigures, they're tiny. They're hard to focus on and they really do drain you. It took me about a day to make that intro piece and it was stinking hot because where I am it's summer and probably where you are it's the middle of winter. I'm always different to you I've noticed. I sort of did this because when I was a kid I remember these fantastic toy commercials which were just so elaborate and uh, it sort of made you want to buy the toy. You don't really see those anymore. It seems to have all fallen over into like a, a CGI realm to, to enhance toy commercials. I don't know why. Everything I've done, it's all done in camera. It's, there's no uh, post-production to it. It's uh, what you see is what you get. What I found was even the simplest little move for these damn minifigures could end in disaster. Uh, and that's the joys of playing of Lego. I hope you've enjoyed this little blooper reel.